Today we're talking money. We get a lot of questions about travel budget and how to plan around how much you're going to spend in different places. We figured let's deep dive New Zealand and talk about where every dollar went while we were in country. Hey, we're Tim and Finn. We make travel videos on YouTube and you can see us travel New Zealand using a link somewhere around here. And today we're going to jump right into the budget. You don't even have to watch the video to the end. We're yeah, just we can just give it say right. it right. We're just give it right so to So we you. spent around $4,000 and that's kind of a nebulous number unless you talk about how long you were there and like what you did. So we were in country for six weeks, 45 total days. And if you do the math, bust out your calculator, comes out to like $45 per person per day. And the crowd cheers. Yay. Yay, it's affordable. And uh, this number does not include airfare to get there or travel insurance while we were there, while we had, but that it varies by person. If you want to learn more about travel insurance, check out our travel insurance video. <laughs> hey, Tim, what did that $4,000 go to? Well, thanks. I'm glad you asked me that. $1,806 spent on a camper van and barely a camper van if you've seen it. It's it's a very small minivan that's got like a couple pots and pans in the back of it. <laughs> if you want to see more, check out the camper van tour here. More videos. How about that's the only thing I say in the whole <laughs> just video. Just keep pointing to point. stuff. So the camper van came from Wicked Camper. We shopped all around before we showed up in New Zealand to see where we'd get the best deal. Mm -hmm. We called a bunch of places, did a bunch of quotes, by far, Wicked Camper was the cheapest. You could have saved money here if you wanted to get their car with a tent on top, but... It wasn't even that much cheaper, if I remember, and then you were sleeping outside, and for six weeks for us, sleeping in a car was challenging enough. Baked into that $1,806 is a one-way fee because we drove from Christchurch to Auckland and didn't return to where we rented from, as well as a $100 non-refundable on transfer fee i mean just silly little fees but it didn't really matter because it was by far the cheapest so we couldn't go anywhere else according to our calculations we spent 757 dollars on groceries over six weeks we hardly ever eat out we're going to talk about restaurants later we spend all of our food money on groceries we also like to eat fairly well so we this is buying decent food and you can certainly spend less in this category. Once you're in the country, you'll see stores like Countdown or New World and Pack and Save. Pro tip, Pack and Save is definitely the cheapest, but Pack you can't, always, can't yeah. always find those. For more information on shopping at a grocery store, we take you now, live, as in not live, over to Past Allison in New Zealand. They grow a ton of apples in New Zealand, so they're super inexpensive. This bag right now is $4.49 for the whole pack. Toss it in. Look at all this steak for six New Zealand dollars. So for about four US, we are eating steak, steak, steak for dinner. Cheese, oh hi, I missed you cheese. You are too expensive here in New Zealand for me to eat you. It's so sad. Most important, drinking. New Zealand produces a lot of wine and there's a lot of wine to choose from, which is a good thing. Beer is expensive here. So we're going to grab some wine tonight. <laughs> Dining out, 64 bucks. So we don't dine out a lot at home. So we didn't dine out a lot in New Zealand. Instead, we wanted to buy nice groceries and nice stuff to cook ourselves. Uh, we did stop a few times for fish and chips at really good fish and chip spots. <laughs> Domino's Pizza, because it was so cheap and we needed pizza. And like sometimes even buying food at McDonald's so we could use the internet there. Like that was just the reality of trying to get online sometimes. But yeah, didn't spend a lot of money on dining out and that kind of also encompasses drinking. It was too expensive for us to even go out to bars really there. Like the average beer is seven bucks a pint. And that's not really what we were doing there. I mean, if you were traveling with a group of friends or if you're traveling solo and you're like you know, bar hopping in Queenstown type thing, that's just a different trip than, than what we were sure. doing. But that could be a huge category for you, spending money on booze. We were you know buying wine at the grocery store and we weren't like totally lame while we were there, but we also weren't just like at the bar picking up chicks. Fuel, $667. This might not surprise you, spent a lot of money on gas. 
Now our awesome camper van, it was a Toyota Voxy. We were supposed to get 30 miles per gallon in this thing. So our real world fuel economy was much, much worse than 30 miles per gallon. Um, there's not really an area you can save here. Like just the fact that a gallon of gas is five bucks, it's gonna get expensive. But that's a good number for you to know when you're planning your fuel, fuel costs. We drove the distance of just about all of New Zealand. So you can see this map here. And we, nice traveled, map. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we traveled all around the South Island and a lot of the North Island. And that was the number that we came up with. Our first night we spent in the Christchurch airport because our flight landed at maybe like 2 a.m. and we Not couldn't a hotel. Pick... <laughs> yeah. yeah. We couldn't pick up the camper van until about 10 a.m. the next morning. So we had eight hours to wait. Um, we spent two nights in a Queenstown hotel because we needed something shipped to us. And then we spent a night in Auckland before we took off our final flight after yes. we had dropped our camper van off. Thank you. Which we didn't account for that in the budget because we used points there because it was so expensive. But nevertheless, those costs are still included in this $317 overall sleeping cost at night. So 99% of the time we slept in campsites. Here's how campsites work in New Zealand. There are free campsites in New Zealand, but these are designated free camp sites. That does not mean that you're just pulling over the car on the side of the road. Um, that just doesn't happen. There's so many tourists around New Zealand and you'll just get caught. That's not really an option. So there are free sites. They're not in popular touristy areas, but if you're spending a long time in New Zealand kind of exploring around, you'll end up finding some, some free sites. Um, also, to find these free sites, you can check out the CamperMate app. We have no affiliation with them, but we just used that app the whole time in country. It's a free app and you can download all of the data so that you can use it offline. We use that like every 10 minutes. While That's we the only it. way we found campsites basically because it told you what was there, if it was like pit toilets or like any resources around. And things to see and gas and activities and we probably should have led the video starting with that app. So just go download the free app. pause, go download that app, you'll need that. Second, there are DOC, Department of Conservation campsites. There is a cost affiliated with these for the maintenance of the campsite, um, but that can range based on the amenities that you have. So the cheapest DOC campsite would provide you with a pit toilet maybe, but it's still gonna cost around $10. I think you pay, yeah, you pay by person. So for two people, it was around 10 US dollars to spend the night at a DOC campsite. That is fairly expensive when you consider the fact that $10 will get you a hotel room in, in Vietnam. You know, this doesn't even provide trash. We were like bringing our trash in the car. So it's, it's really just a pit toilet and a place to park. But I mean, on the plus side, some of the cheap campgrounds we stayed at from DOC were the best campgrounds and like best places we've stayed all over. I mean, just like parking right on the beach, watching the sunrise, just awesome, awesome sites that were way off the beaten path. That's a good point. The the reason why they're so rural, they don't have amenities, is because they're in the most beautiful locations. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, you can also spend a lot more money on a campsite at even just DOC sites that have more amenities. You might be spending up to more like $10 a person. And then there's also private campsites as well where you can pull in and if you have a true RV where you're connecting, you can you know plug in and, and um, put in all your hookups. And then you have amenities like laundry and showers on site, um, but you're paying a little bit more than that. I think the most expensive campground that we stayed at was about 45 total dollars for the two of us to stay there overnight. 50 bucks for a cell phone. We got a SIM card from Vodafone at an airport. It was like about $50 for three gigs. We had to do a reload of data on it, but just overall pretty expensive for how slow it was and how little data you got with it. But essential because there is like no internet in New Zealand. I feel bad for <laughs> Kiwis. Like you guys need to get out here on the internet and like, it's really cool. And then when you find it, it's you expensive. Find it, you can't afford it. And then on top of it, if you can't afford it, it's still really slow. Like New Zealand wins the award for <laughs> worst internet we saw the entire time. 
oh yeah, like yeah. rural Vietnam or like on an island in a bamboo hut, just like so much better than a <laughs> Sorry, McDonald's guys. in New Zealand. <laughs> and we're not we're not like trying to like say anything ne- negative or whatever, but if you are envisioning yourself like live Instagramming your trip or travel vlogging and uploading as you're there, like I just I don't know how you would do that. Even if you found internet to do that, you just based on the size, because everything in New Zealand is charged by the gig, or actually more specifically, like the megabyte, like the hundred hundred megs all over the place. If you were trying to upload a five meg YouTube, a five gig YouTube video, it might cost you thirty U.S. dollars. I mean, in an extreme that might be a little bit of a (laughs) but it's going to cost you more than five dollars. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Miscellaneous cost, $339. This encompasses all those little things like you didn't even budget for, or I don't know, stuff like about the ferry to take our camper van from the South Island to the North Island, what's up Blue Bridge, Um, a speeding ticket we got in Hokkaido like a few weeks after we left. Uh, And we didn't know that we were getting a ticket, it was just like a camera, we were going two kilometers over the speed limit and got mailed the speeding ticket at home. Like, just FYI that that can happen. (laughs) Also, a, like, camping table that we left at a campsite because we forgot was under the car. Like, little stupid stuff like that. We had to take a bus after we returned the camper van to get back to the hotel. Just food in the internet. Food in the the airport. You just, you need some extra cash for... Incidentals will come up. Incidentals. Allison, how could we have done this trip cheaper? Thanks, Tim. I'm glad you asked. Really, the only category for as long as we were there is we could have done cheaper on groceries, maybe. Mm-hmm. And we're also not talking about anything extreme. It's not like we're like buying all organic or anything. No, it's just nothing. like... Um, we just saw so many camper vanners like living on ramen and spaghetti. Like you'd look around when you were parked and nobody was cooking fish or anything like that. Right. And I like to cook. So we were buying produce and we... We're spending money to say, oh, I I want some olive oil to like make a a meal. Tim, where do you wish you had spent more money? If we weren't at the end of the trip and kind of running low. By our 10 month like long trip. Sure. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Clarification. Uh, Would have liked to do an activity like in Queenstown. They had hang gliding that looked awesome. Would have loved to do a bungee jump, but it was just so expensive to do that stuff. Thanks for bringing that up, Tim. You'll... <laughs> I don't know what this like character is. You'll notice in this video that we have no line item talking about activities. That's because we really spent zero dollars on activities in New Zealand, which is unheard of. Um, New Zealand is the capital of spending money on activities. We just really enjoyed hiking and hanging out in nature or we had free versions of paid for activities like you can pay for a tour to go through a glow worm cave and go tubing and some cool stuff um we found some caves that had glow worms that you can just like walk into um we did the franz joseph glacier hike up to it but we didn't pay for a tour to like hike on top of the or a helicopter ride up (laughs) right right (laughs) so when you like th- when you're thinking about your when you're thinking about your overall budget and you already know that you're doing the Nevis bungee and you're going to do uh, the the guided glacier tour you're adding so much more onto the budget that we're presenting you just just so that you know that i mean don't not do it because those those things are totally awesome but instead of a $2000 budget per person you're looking at more of a $2500 budget which is 25 percent more so it was just with two activities all in all i feel like we had a flagship experience in new zealand like we did everything we wanted to do just like the quintessential oh yeah like what you imagine new zealand could be like it's except a lot for of nevis hiking, bungee. <laughs> except for nevis bungee yes I agree. but the yes. best things in new zealand are free and uh, we did all of them and by skipping some of those activities we were able to spend more time doing that free stuff Oh, I like how you said that. I know. It's like fin- let's just fin- let's just finish our video. Like, if you want to check out us in New Zealand in a vlog style, and you haven't seen Tripped already, Tripped is what's exciting on our channel. So go check out Tripped, our travel series. Um, if you want some New Zealand information, you can also check below. And 
We have a whole playlist of kind of like boring campsite videos that are just like quick tour videos with music. Oh, while we Wait. were while we were in New Zealand, oh, I already mentioned the travel insurance. While we were in New Zealand, we needed travel insurance twice, once for health insurance, one because somebody hit our car. And if you're concerned about things like driving or like vehicle insurance, things like that, um, we have more information in our travel insurance video. We try to make travel insurance as fun and sexy as possible. Also interesting. It's yeah. still insurance at the end of the day though. Yeah. <laughs>